Erectile dysfunction, or ED, is the persistent inability to achieve or maintain an erection sufficient enough for sexual performance. The anatomy and physiology of erections is complex and multifactorial, but ultimately involves arterial dilatation and venous occlusion, resulting in engorgement of the penis. More specifically, the penis features three cylindrical structures, the pair of corpora cavernosa and the corpora spongiosum. These are made up of sinusoids that fill with blood during the erectile response, leading to rigidity. A collagenous layer called the tunica albuginea surrounds the corpora cavernosa and contributes to venous occlusion by occluding the veins draining the sinusoids. Blood enters the penis via the internal pudendal artery, which ultimately further branches into cavernous arteries, filling sinusoids, which then also compress the venous outflow, which drains via the deep and superficial dorsal veins. Sexual stimulation results in sympathetic inhibition and parasympathetic activation, with release of pro-erectogenic neurotransmitters. For example, Nitric oxide is released from presynaptic nerve fibers of the cavernosa, as well as from endothelial cells. This ultimately leads to cyclic GMP being formed, which causes calcium to be sequestered within the endoplasmic reticulum. The reduced calcium level leads to smooth muscle relaxation, promoting sinusoidal blood flow and promoting an erection. To reverse this process, Phosphodiesterase converts cyclic GMP to 5-guanosine monophosphate, which allows calcium levels to normalize. This is important as it is where agents such as sildenafil, commonly known as Viagra, target. It is important to know that these drugs only work on cyclic GMP that is already present. Therefore, sexual stimulation is still required to achieve an erection using these medications. ED is a symptom and not a disease itself, with disruption anywhere in the erectile response generating it. The causes can be divided into organic, psychogenic situational, and psychogenic generalized. Organic causes include vascular or arteriogenic in around 40%, diabetes in 30%, and medicines such as antihypertensives, antidepressants, estrogens, or antiandrogens. I also include alcohol, marijuana, and cigarette smoking here, making up around 15% of cases. Pelvic surgery, radiation, or trauma makes up 6%, and neurogenic causes like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's make up 5%. Endocrine causes such as hypogonadism or thyroid disturbance makes up around 3%. Psychogenic situational causes can include partner-related problems, a lack of arousability in that specific relationship, situational performance anxiety like fear of failure, and can be associated with negative mood states like depression or major life stress. More general psychogenic causes can include aging-related decline in sexual arousal or libido, chronic disorder of sexual intimacy, and a primary lack of sexual arousal. As we said, erectile dysfunction is itself a symptom, and as such, it is important to establish the underlying cause. The history is crucial, and gives the largest clue as to the cause, with organic causes being more likely if there is a gradual onset It is occurring in all sexual scenarios, including with the partner and self-stimulation, and there is a lack of non-coital erections, for example, morning erections. In contrast, psychological causes tend to be suggested by a sudden onset, it being variable in different situations, and preservation of non-coital erections. It's also important to remember that ED can lead to development of psychosexual problems, as well as perpetuation of the ED and potentially an impact on relationships and mental health. The International Index of Erectile Function is a 15-point questionnaire 
used to assess various domains, including sexual desire, as well as the impact. Physical examination includes examination of the genitals, looking for any deformity or abnormalities of the penis, for example, Peyronie's disease, which is a condition where there is fibrosis within the tunica albuginea, which can lead to curvature and potentially pain with erections. Testes are examined for size and irregularities, such as any lumps, and the degree of androgenization should be assessed as a potential clue for hypogonadism, for example, hair pattern and gynecomastia. Blood pressure should also be checked as part of the cardiovascular workup. Further investigations can include bloods such as HbA1c and fasting glucose, lipid profile and thyroid screen. A morning serum testosterone and prolactin may also aid in identifying hypogonadism in the setting of reduced libido. The treatment largely involves addressing the underlying cause. Non-pharmacological management can include weight loss, cessation of smoking and alcohol use, and increased physical activity. Psychosexual therapy, including potentially couples therapy, may also improve symptoms. The main medication offered are phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, sildenafil, also known as Viagra, tadalafil, vardenafil, and avanafil are the current options, with tadalafil having a longer half-life, allowing for daily dosing and improved erections for up to 36 hours compared to the usual 4 to 6 hours. Use of nitrates or alpha blockers are generally contraindicated due to the risk of severe hypotension. Other contraindications include severe cardiovascular disease, unstable angina or coital angina, as well as heart failure beyond the New York Heart Association classification stage 2, as well as uncontrolled arrhythmias or hypertension, amongst others. There is an option for intracavernosal injections of alloprostadil a prostaglandin E1 analogue for those who do not respond to phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. Intraurethral preparations are also available for those who do not wish to self-inject. Priapism, meaning an unwanted erection, typically lasting more than 3 hours, is a possible complication and requires urgent medical review. Referral to a specialist is required for consideration of surgical intervention such as insertion of pump devices. These remove the natural ability to achieve an erection and do carry a risk of complications such as infection. Vacuum devices are also available and research is currently evaluating methods such as arterial dilatation, though currently isn't readily available.